Now last time we worked out an approximation for the electrostatic potential of a uniformly charged ring of radius r at a point on its axis. And we found using the multipole expansion formula that there was a monopole term and uh, that there was also a quadrupole term. The dipole term was zero. So the result of those first two terms added together gives us an approximation for the potential due to that charged ring. What we'd like to do now is finish off the problem by comparing this to the exact result because this problem is simple enough that we can write down and simplify the exact result for the potential and there are various forms for this depending on whether we've got a charged object in one, two, or three dimensions but the same basic idea 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 times the integral of in this case lambda dl prime which is the charge element which could be just a little piece of the overall ring right here and in the denominator we have script r which is the distance from the charge element to the point where we're trying to find the potential and so it looks like uh, that's not a very good effort now is it let's try and fix that I can erase that and hopefully do a little better job of drawing in the line that joins the point on the axis to the charge element. Okay, so that's script R. And of course the ring itself has radius capital R. And what's notable about this problem with the charged ring is that every point on the ring has that same script R, that same distance to the point on the axis. And so right away we can reduce this problem using the Pythagorean theorem to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 the term the 1 over script R term comes out and that becomes 1 over root of capital R squared plus little r squared all under the square root like that and the integral that's left the integral of lambda dl prime adds up or integrates out to just give us the total charge on the ring so the exact answer for this is nothing more than q over 4 pi epsilon 0 times that square root term r squared capital R squared plus little r squared and so we do now have an expression for v as a function of r on the axis of the ring so this is exact and we can't really tell just on simple inspection whether the approximate formula that we have underneath the diagram is a good approximation to that or not we have to do something to tease that out and the easiest way to do it is to take the exact expression and approximate it by looking at that square root term in the denominator and so if we use a binomial expansion formula for that we can then look at the first few terms in the binomial expansion which will then give us the first few terms in the potential and those terms we can compare to the approximate forms that we got from the multipole expansion so the goal here is to look at the square root term in the denominator which is actually if we want to write it in a way that will make it easiest to resubstitute in to the expression above we can write this as capital R squared plus little r squared to the minus one half power and because if we do that then we'll see uh, that we can plug it directly into the expression for v above without having to divide by it we'll just multiply q over four pi epsilon zero by this term so in order to approximate this we're going to remind ourselves that the binomial expansion can be used to write down any kind of term that's the sum of two squares to a power but the form of it that's going to be easiest for us to use is the one that looks like this one plus x to the nth power then is given by an infinite series that starts with one plus n x that'll be the second term plus n 
times n minus 1 times x squared over 2 factorial, and so on and so forth. The next term has an x cubed and a 3 factorial in it, and so on. So this continues. What we want to do is take this expression with the sum of the r squared terms and write it in this form. And to do that, I need to clear out some space. So let me do that here. Get rid of our results because they'll be really easy for us to write down again in just a minute. So first, let's work on this term that we're going to try to expand. And I want to write it in the form of where it looks like 1 plus x to the nth power. Uh, so to do that, what I need to do is factor out uh, a factor of uh, little r squared. So let me write it like this. Okay, to the minus 1 half power. That is equal to, I can pull out little r squared times 1 plus big R squared over little r squared. And then the whole thing I have to raise to the negative 1 half power. Okay, and that's easy because the first term, the r squared term that leads out in front, uh, reduces to inches 1 over r, leaving behind the 1 plus big R squared over little r squared to the minus 1 half. Now, why did I do this? Why did I factor out little r squared instead of potentially factoring out big R squared? What I wanted to get in rewriting this expression was something that would look like 1 plus x to the n, where x would be a number small compared to 1. The logic behind using the binomial expansion is that if the x is small compared to 1, each successive term gets smaller and smaller. Because a number less than 1, when you square it, it gets smaller. So if x were to be 0 0.01, right, and then I square it, it gets much, much smaller by a factor of 100, and so on and so forth. So then the binomial expansion might be a good way of getting an approximation, because I wouldn't have to keep all the terms. I would just have to keep the first few, because the later terms would get smaller and smaller. So that's what I'm going to do right here. And by factoring out the little r squared, I end up with this expression here, where now I have 1 plus big R squared over little r squared. And in the limit where little r is big, where we move to a point on the axis far away from the rod, then big R squared over little r squared will get small compared to 1. So that's what I'm trying to do. So now let me write this down by keeping just the first three terms in the binomial expansion. So I've got the 1 over r, and then here's what I have. First term is 1, second term is n, the power, which is negative 1 half, times x, which is the capital R squared over little r squared. Okay. The next term would be uh, plus n is negative a half times n minus 1 is negative 3 halves, so that would be 3 quarters over 2 factorial, so I would end up with 3 eighths times x squared. And so, let me actually make sure that's a 3. x squared then would become r to the fourth over little r to the fourth as well. So, that could go on and on, but I'm going to stop right at that point. All right, so to take the exact result and now write down a term by term approximation for it, all I need to do is plug this into the original expression. I've erased it, but it's not too difficult to rewrite that. It looks like this. So v was q over 4 pi epsilon 0, and then I took the r squared plus little r squared to the minus 1 half, like that. So all I have to do now is write this as, well, I've got the 1 over r times 1. So this is q over 4 pi epsilon naught r. 
and then in the brackets, the first term is 1, the second term is minus capital R squared over 2 little r squared. Next term plus 3 eighths capital R to the fourth over little r to the fourth and we'll stop there. So what do we see? Ha! Let's take a look because the first two terms in this expression that comes from the exact result ought to match the first two terms we got from our approximate result that came from the multipole expansion from a completely different procedure. So we'll see if that works. The first term, ha, it does match. Right away we can see that because we get q over 4 pi epsilon naught r. Beautiful. That one matches. The second term minus, let's see, r squared, so we have q r squared over 8 pi epsilon naught r cubed. And sure enough, it matches too. And so we've got confirmation here that comes directly from the exact result. Right, This expression here is v exact. It comes from the exact result. And we're writing out an approximation to it. But if we keep an infinite number of terms, it really is the exact result. And what we see is the first two terms match up identically with the two terms that came from the multipole expansion. And we've even got, using the exact method, if we wanted to, we could go further, and it looks like that indeed would give us the, the next term, which would be uh, 1 over r to the fifth, and that would come from the uh, uh, term beyond the quadrupole term. And so uh, that, that gives us another approach to systematically expanding this. But for this purpose, we've demonstrated that keeping the first two terms gives us agreement with what came from the multipole expansion. And that's great. That's a nice check on the multipole procedure uh, just to show that we get reliable results from it. So the big picture then is that the multipole expansion method for a problem like this, and let's imagine we have a problem where writing down the exact result won't be so easy. Using the multipole expansion method for a problem like that will give us a useful approximation that we will have by just keeping the first few terms in the multipole expansion.